I'd just like to draw your attention to one or two matters which may not have been in the knowledge of those who are not aware of this case. Afia Siddiqui was captured in Pakistan in 2003 and she had three children with her at the time. From 2003 to 2008, she disappeared from the surface of this earth. As far as the security forces were concerned, she did not exist. Dr. Afia Siddiqui can be seen here being interrogated by Afghan authorities in 2008. She and her three children had gone missing in Pakistan five years earlier in mysterious circumstances. Her elder son Ahmed, then 12 years old, can also be seen crying and shielding his face, trying to evade questions from his interrogators. Afia Siddiqui is a Pakistani national with a PhD from an American university. The US government accuses her of belonging to Al-Qaeda and says she attempted to kill members of the military in Afghanistan while being held unsecured inside a police station. They say she was behind a curtain when a group of US personnel walked in. One of the men left his gun on the ground and Ms. Siddiqui is accused of quietly dragging it behind the curtain before opening fire. She missed, but was shot and injured in response. Thank you very much everybody for inviting me again. Uh, I came here I suppose some months ago and I'm very sorry that I've not got great news that we haven't got what we wanted at that time but as our friend said we will go on. Somebody said to me on the television camera a moment ago, what am I doing here supporting a Muslim woman? Well, let me tell you, I'm not supporting a Muslim woman, I'm supporting a woman. I don't mind whether she's Jewish or Christian or Muslim or Buddhist or whatever. She is a human being whose human rights are being denied. And that's why I'm here. Because I think the whole human family comes together as a family. Whatever labels we use, whatever our convictions, we have a right to live in peace and to live in justice. And I think that is why I'm here and I'm sure that many others. And I'm delighted to be with the Muslim community because I know perfectly well that the Muslim... JFAC is a Justice for Afia Coalition. Um, what happened was in 2008, Afia Siddiqui popped up in America. Now, before then, people like Moisen Beg and Lord Nasir Ahmed and Yvonne Ridley, uh, these people um, in particular were, were investigating, particularly Yvonne I would say, was investigating where this woman, Afia Siddiqui, this so-called grey lady of Bagram that... Afia Siddiqui, missing since March 2003, suddenly appeared in Ghazni, Afghanistan carrying a handbag containing several different types of chemical explosives, so we were told, um, a computer thumb drive with immaculately handwritten chemical formulas in her own handwriting uh, in the, this, this bag, along with pictures of the New York skyline and the Empire State Building. It was obviously a setup, a frame up, 
then she's taken to New York and she gets charged uh, with some sort of uh, uh, kind of created uh, a charge of trying to kill some American soldiers. She was kidnapped and renditioned at that point because she was... There were no extradition papers. Uh, there was no consular access given to her, and this is something that I have challenged the U.S. ambassador in, in Islamabad with. The question then arises, why was she transferred from Afghanistan to America? She was, in fact, rendition. It's a well-known fact that people, some prisoners, have been renditioned to Europe, to the Middle East, to the United States, and vice versa. In, in, it's common knowledge. It is in, 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 in the knowledge of the majority of government that this has happened. The British government denied all knowledge of this. The American government denied it. But eventually it came out that people have in fact been conditioned. And this is uh, another issue. I cannot believe for the life of me that if she was trying to kill somebody, uh, a woman, uh, with three children, uh, she wasn't on holidays in uh, in Kabul, you know, because they say that they arrested her in Kabul when she was walking around uh, somewhere, uh, and they took her in and they were questioning her, and this is what happened because suddenly she tried to kill and she tried to escape. Well, you know, I, I, there are lots of questions. Now, then, if she had taken the gun, she would have become the very first terror suspect since 9-11 to have um, taken a weapon from an American soldier in, um, while in custody. She would have been the first one. I have no hesitation to say that uh, there are three countries who violated international law in my view. Pakistan, Afghanistan and the United States in the end. If she was this uh, adept markswoman, uh, terrorist, very dangerous character who'd taken the gun, I would have thought that if she'd fired off a couple of rounds into that packed room, she would have hit somebody or something. Um, but there were no bullets found, no casings found, nothing in the walls, n certainly none of the soldiers were shot. The only independent witness uh, who says that she sprang forward and wrestled a gun from an American soldier was um, an Afghan translator who is now living in New York with his family um, and has a green card. Well, these facts which I've mentioned are blatantly obvious to anybody that there was a breach of her rights, there was a breach of law, there was a breach of the United Nations Constitution, there were violations of international law in her case. Why is it that the Amnesty International, who have been involved in so many cases, have shown no interest? And we've simply said we wanted an independent medical delegation to visit Afia. And the, there was a reason for this. I mean, I, as a student, I was involved with Amnesty International, done several events on human rights um, throughout my sort of career. Um, and um, one of the reasons, you know, organisations such as Amnesty International and human rights organisations cited for, for a lack of interest in this case was the fact that there wasn't an independent medical opinion on her case. So that's what we were, that's how I became involved. That case in New York was flawed right from the start and had no legal basis and should never have gone ahead. One outcome is quite obvious because she's been convicted appeal can be lodged to the higher court to the appeal court against conviction so that's the first obvious option and the second option is bearing in mind the international connotation attached to this case i.e. her capture rendition then transfer from one country to another and her detention, unlawful detention, and then transfer to another country. It is quite possible for the attorney, U.S. Attorney General to intervene in this case. And the term which they use is to vacate the conviction. Or 
we can do is wait. All we can do is pray and, and, and hope that reason prevails. We're not against the Americans. We're not against them, but we are for justice. And all we, we ask for is justice. Let her go free. It's been proven that she's not guilty. Let her go free. If you want to do anything, if you have to give her a sentence, let her serve the sentence in Pakistan. But yeah, we can only wait now. and we have to find other ways of resolving conflict. But that is not what our friend today, Afia, is being accused of at all. We don't know what she's being accused of. An absurd accusation that she picks up a heavy armor-like rifle or an automatic rifle. You try it. I've been in the army. You don't pick up an army and a weapon just like that. It's quite complicated. How do you turn it on? There's a the safety catch. You don't know where the safety catch is unless you're trained in armor, in picking up weapons and knowing how to use them. It's a stupid. And who gets shot in this episode? She does. It's not, it makes no sense whatsoever. There ought to be a public inquiry into the whole business, not just of her, but of all that's gone on in Bagram, in Guantanamo. We should all be ashamed, those of us who have been silent in any part of all this.